Welcome back to Milk and Electronics, or as you might start calling it, the Monterey channel. We've been doing a lot of Monterey-related content recently. Um, I only have one machine running Monterey. That's the Test 5, 1 uh, 2010 Mac Pro. Uh, now, I decided it might be good for me experimental purposes to install it on at least one natively supported machine. But as I've said repeatedly, the machines that I actually use are staying on Big Sur for right now. Uh, what I chose was this. It's a early 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro. Uh, I don't use... Oh, right side up there. I don't use the machine that much. This used to be my primary laptop. I replaced it with a 15 inch 2015 uh, which I got an outstanding deal on largely because it did not have an SSD so I, I put an SSD in it and it's it's running Big Sur very happily right now uh, so I took the 13 inch and began the installation of Monterey and it errored out it errored out like five times <laughs> yeah uh once it got well it, it, it pretty much would get all the way through to to the end so i did some online research and i have discovered there is another problem with uh with monterey specifically with machines like this uh the series of MacBook Pros where you could easily replace the SSD and upgrade it. Monterey puts a firmware patch on these machines. It's, it's an invisible patch. You don't really see it happening, but it does put that firmware patch on there. If you do not have an Apple OEM SSD in the machine, it won't recognize the drive. So there is no firmware patch done. Now, there are evidently two answers to this. One is to simply go ahead and use OpenCore. The OpenCore Legacy Patcher will run and there's a setting you can, you can adjust to get it to run on natively supported machines such as this. Now, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because it's incredibly likely that whatever comes after Monterey will drop support for 2015s. Uh, that's not written in stone, but it it could certainly happen. Uh, but I chose not to do that. Now, I thought I still had the 256 gig SSD. I've looked all over the place. I cannot find it. But I have discovered, going on eBay, you can get 128-gig SSDs for a little bit under $30. So I got one. And the plan for today is going to be we put this SSD in. We're going to have to uh, then install Monterey on this SSD. That will install the firmware patch. We can then put the original uh, SSD, I've got a 512 gigabyte SSD in there with an adapter. Uh, we can put that back in the machine. Since the firmware patch is done, it should then work. At least that's the plan. If you want to see if that plan does in fact work, please stay tuned. All right, on the back of these machines, and this is true of the uh, 15 inch as well there are 10 screws four along here four along here one on each side and in typical apple form these are pentalobe screws if you've never heard of a pentalobe screw it's probably because you may never have considered trying to get into a, a macbook pro of this era Fortunately, I have done so, so I have a couple of these things. Uh, once we get in there, the SSD is held in with a single Torx screw. So we have the Torx uh, 
driver ready as well. Now, these are really tiny screws. Uh, so I'm gonna take my time doing this to ensure that I don't lose one. You do not need to have to see me unscrew these screws. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, now that we're in, uh, there are some little clips in there that need to be dislodged since I had this uh, back case off it before. It's not a real problem. We want, of course, to disconnect the battery connection. Okay, and we'll want to be very, very sure that it goes back in. And now, taking a Torx, this is the SSD. It's a team group, 512 gigabyte NVMe. And an adapter. There's your standard MENV connector. And our adapter with a proprietary Apple connector. All right. Now we take our certified OEM, and boy, it had better really be an OEM SSD. It's got the right connector, but that doesn't mean much. <clears throat> okay. In we go. Make sure we're using the Torx here. that's in there. Do be very sure if you're doing this at home that you get the battery connected again. If you've got <clears throat> if you've got the power brick plugged in with the MagSafe it will start up even if the battery is not connected. It will not run very well but it will start up. Okay. All right. Now I, I have no idea and there's no way of testing the SSD other than putting it in the machine and trying it. Um, I don't know of anybody who makes enclosures for these proprietary Apple connectors. Uh, I have no idea if it's formatted, if perhaps there's an OS on it. There will be only one way to find out. Okay, I will put everything back together so we can start it up and take a look. Please stay tuned. Well, let's see. The new SSD is in. Let's see if we get a chime. No, it didn't chime, but we are booting up into an OS. We'll see what version. Mojave. Hmm. Okay, this has got... Yeah, well, okay, let's see, what, what can I do? Because I said, I'm not going to be able to get into this. Uh, guest user is almost useless. Uh, it is possible to... boot into single user mode and force the OS to start up as though it were a first time startup right after install. 
and I could then create a new uh, user account in order to move forward. Uh, but I think maybe the thing to do you know what just for the heck of it I want to start into recovery mode and this takes a while so stay tuned okay well, let's go into Disk Utility. Am I connected to the internet here? Oh, it's Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh... Disk utility. Show all devices. Apple SSD. All right. Let's erase what's on it. Okay. Might as well go into. APFS, GUID partition map, erase. Okay. And we'll reinstall Mac OS. Mojave should do the job as well as anything else. Okay, this should be bone simple, straightforward, so uh, we'll see you hopefully on the Mojave desktop. Stay tuned. Well, okay, while you've been gone, uh, we did get a complete installation of Mojave. I did the security updates, the Safari update, and as soon as it restarted from that, you know, I'm not going to turn this on with my Apple Watch. <laughs> no. Not with this SSD in there. 128 gig SSD. This is not long for this world. Okay. Uh, but as soon as it restarted, we have our Monterey upgrade. And this is what's going to tell the tale. Uh, I had pointed out earlier in the video that you can get OEM 128 gigabyte SSDs on eBay for about 30 bucks. However, let's realize, of course, eBay is eBay. Uh, not everything a seller says about his goods on eBay is necessarily true. So you, you got to be careful with that. Uh, we'll, we're going to find out, you know, depending on how this installation goes. Every, everything about it looks good. It looked right. Uh, when I went into disk utility, uh, it was identifying as an Apple drive. Uh, but then again, I've seen that kind of thing before. Well, anyhow, uh, we'll let you know how things go. Stay tuned. Well, we're past the first fail point uh, where you get an error even before the, the Mac restarts uh, that it will 
basically just say unknown error, try running the installer again, and you can do it forever and it'll never come back. It can also stall out during this process where you get a, a more informative error telling you that the firmware uh, could not be installed. But we're going to find out. Stay tuned. Well, and we have achieved Monterey. Now, this does teach us some things. First of all, it does teach us that you don't have to put in the original drive. That's what Apple has been saying about this problem. Put in the original drive, install it, then the firmware gets installed, and you can go back to your third-party drive. Uh, any OEM SSD that would work in a 2015 MacBook Pro uh, will work to install the firmware from, uh, from Monterey. Uh, all right, so I'm going to I'm going to set this up. I'm not exactly sure why, but I am. Then I get to do this entire thing again on the original 512 gigabyte uh, SSD. Uh, since the firmware is in there, we should be able to do that. Well, anyhow, stay tuned. Well, here we are. Uh, I've had the machine opened up again. I've put the uh, third-party SSD back in and we're back up and running on Big Sur. So what we're going to do at this point is the installer for Monterey has already been downloaded. So we're going to install. Authenticate. And this this may take a while, but it, it should be it should be smooth. <laughs> Hopefully we we'll see this again on the Monterey desktop. If not, I'm not sure what I'll do, but we'll find that out. If you want to find it out, stay tuned. And here we are, we've made it. Pardon the reflection of that light behind me there. Uh, Retina 13 inch early 2015. 12.0.1. Of course, what we're looking for. Um, all right. Yeah, okay. Here, this I think is what needed to be loaded the uh, OS loader version. Uh, I had never seen that before. System firmware uh, does not seem to have changed, I think. Uh, but this OS loader version uh, that appears to be new. And if you have one of these 2015 MacBook Pros, and it affects some other years as well, uh, and want to install Monterey, I guess we hope that you did not put in uh, a third-party SSD, but so many people have done it. And so many people have done it and not held on to the original SSDs, so I felt pretty lucky. Now, full disclosure, the first couple of clips uh, when I opened up the machine and actually put in the SSD, that was a different SSD. Uh, and that one turned out, as I went through the process, to be a third-party SSD, even though it was specifically advertised as an OEM. Uh, fortunately, I had ordered a second one from another seller because I knew what a possibility this would be. And this one worked. It was a, a true Apple SSD. Uh, okay. So they are available. It was about 30 bucks on eBay. I'll try to remember to uh, note the eBay seller in the, in the description. Uh, in any event, be good to other people. They need and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. 
any good we do in this world is going to start from there. We'll make the world a better place. It isn't yet, so take very, very good and careful care. Um, unless more current events happen, and that's been what's going on lately. I've had a series coming up on uh, restoring, rebuilding almost, a very broken up uh, Power Mac G3. That, the, the beginning of that series should be next week's video. Although the way things are going in the world of Mac OS, who knows? But until those other things come up on the channel, this has been Broken Electronics.